Hello, everybody. This is your professor once again, Dan Yeraneta Kabulay, for the course Tourism Entrepreneurship. We're now in our very last lecture for this week, and it is on financial planning and risk assessment. The financial plan and risk assessment are two very important components of a business plan. Without a financial plan, you would not know if you will be successful or not. One of the main barometers of success of a business is if it is making money, because after all, businesses are for profit. And you will have to anticipate problems along the way, because if you fail to do that, problems will be inevitable. Talagang magkakaroon ka ng problema, so importante na malaman mo ahead. Ano ba yung mga pwede mong maging problema? So you can already develop solutions to those problems even before they happen. So for this particular video, we will talk about how to come up with a startup cost, how to write your projected statement of comprehensive income or your projected financial projections, okay? And then your significant ratios. And finally, assessing the different risk. Let's start with schedule of startup cost. Pag sinabi natin startup cost, sometimes they call it the investment or the development cost. Magkano ba ang kailangan mo para itayo mo ang iyong napiling negosyo? Is this going to be a fast food outlet? It's going to be a travel agency, etc. Every new business venture must estimate how much investment uh, to be put into the company. This is usually based on the estimated startup cost. Ano ba yung mga gusto mong bilhin? Ano ba yung mga gusto mong ipagawa? Ano ba yung kailangan mo para makapagsimula kang magnegosyo? If you put too much money into the business, you will be overcapitalized. Then you will have a lot of idle funds. Hindi maganda yun. Okay? Natutulog yung pera mo. If you put in very little money, darating yung panahon, kakapusin ka. Mangungutang ka, mababaon ka sa utang. Okay? So you will be very undercapitalized. So either way, it is a problem. So the entrepreneur must really estimate a, a, an almost accurate amount of money to put into the business. Yung tamang-tama lang. Hindi masyado malaki, hindi masyado maliit. So you will not run into liquidity problems later on. Pag sinabi natin liquidity, yan yung availability of cash. Pag hindi ka liquid, wala kang cash. Okay? A business must be liquid all the time. Thus, it is important to list down all possible expenses as well as items you intend to purchase for the business. For example, in slide number four, these are some of the typical items included in the schedule of startup costs. Okay? First, property acquisition. Sa negosyo mo ba, kailangan mong bumili ng lupa o ng building? Yan. Kasi kung ikaw ay bibili ng building, ikaw ay bibili ng lupa, malaking halaga yan. Okay? Now, you have to factor that in, in your investment or your startup costs. Are you going to renovate? Are you going to construct something for the lo location of your business? Like it's an office, it's a warehouse, it's a coffee shop. Do you need to do some construction work? You have to factor that in your startup cost. Will you buy some furniture, equipment, cabinets, machinery, gadgets, computers? That's what you call FF&E, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. List them down. Ano yung mga gusto mong bilhin? Kaya kung coffee shop ang gusto mong gawing negosyo, you need plenty of uh, kitchen equipment as well as restaurant or coffee shop equipment. Okay? Coffee maker, blender, ice maker, etc. Okay? Then your opening pre-opening payroll. Let's say you want to start in June. Pero syempre, you will hire people in March. You have to train them. There will be training expenses. Syempre, during the training period, bibigyan mo sila ng konting sweldo, maybe a training allowance. So there must be a payroll cost also. Then the permits and licenses you need to operate the business. Your mayor's permit, your SEC uh, license, etc. So all these things you need. If you're going to put up a travel agency, you need to put up a bond. No, I think the bond is about... Uh, uh, 5 million, I think. So, medyo malaki yung bond pag travel agency. Pag recruitment agency, mga 10 million yata yung bond required. Okay? With the POEA, kung overseas. Uh, consultancy and legal fees, kung kukuha ka ng consultant, ng abogado na tutulong sa'yo. Medyo mababa lang yan kung kaibigan mo yung consultant o yung lawyer. 
uh, maybe your pre-opening marketing expenses. Before you even start your business, nagma-marketing ka na eh. You're already promoting your products and services online. So that will require cost also. Sinong gagawa nun? And finally, grand opening. Well, yung iba, wala, uh, wala nang grand opening expenses kasi they want to open in a very simple way. Pero kung medyo gusto mong may press, may press, uh, uh, may mga media people, press people, you will invite, well, and you are gonna have a grand opening, the expenses for that should be factored in also. Okay? So, yan ang mga karaniwang items na nilalagay sa schedule of startup cost. Now, at the end of each period, let's say uh, after one month, after six months, or even after one year, it's, it's good for a business to report the results of its operations through financial statements. Okay? The most important financial statement is the statement of comprehensive income. Hindi ko na ituturo yung iba pa. Okay? Pero ito napakahalaga kasi it will determine kung ikaw ba ay kumita o hindi. Since the business is not yet existing, what you will do now is a projection, financial projection. You have to project the statement of comprehensive income. Okay? So basically, ang comprehensive income, it is an equation. Revenues minus expenses equals profit. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Okay? So lahat ng kinita mo, kwentahin mo. Tapos ibawas mo lahat ng gastos mo. So it's good to have a five-year projection so you will know if your profitability is sustainable for the next five years. So try to make sure that your forecast is conservative, meaning hindi masyado aggressive, no? hindi masyado bloated, maliit lang yung forecast, and realistic, nakaapak ka dapat sa lupa. So the format I'm giving you here is very generic. Gross revenues, or sometimes you can call it gross sales. So i-detail mo, ano yung mga sources of income mo? Sources of revenues, is it from restaurant sales? Is it from merchandise sales? Is it from catering? Okay, kung ikaw ay isang coffee shop or restaurant. So, sales from A, B, C, ano yung mga sources? Enumerate them and then add them together. That's going to be your total sales or total revenues. Then you deduct your cost of sales. Usually, sa restaurant business, ang cost of sales ay mga uh, one-third. No? Kaya kung halimbawa, 100% ang sales mo, 33% usually ang standard cost of sales. Okay? And then the difference is what you call gross profit. And then you deduct all your operating expenses and your administrative and marketing expenses. Then you will arrive at EBITDA. What is EBITDA? Earnings before income tax, depreciation, and amortization. So this is like your net profit before tax. Okay? So importante yung EBITDA ay mataas kasi... Uh, dyan natin malalaman kung ikaw ay kikita o hindi. Kasi hindi mo pa dinididak yung tax, hindi mo pa dinididak yung depreciation. So, dapat medyo malaki siya. Okay? Now, look at the example I gave you in the Maharlika Financial Projections. It will serve as your guide. The same thing is true for the startup cost. Okay? Now, when you talk about significant ratios, what are significant ratios? So, these are basically numbers that give us a good indicator if a business is healthy or not in the next few years. Okay, so success or failure can be derived from the financial ratios. Ano ba yung mga klase ng financial ratios? Generally, there are four. There's what you call profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, stability ratios, and growth ratios. Well, ituturo ko lang yung ilan. Hindi ko kailangan ituro lahat because you're not accounting majors. But the ones that you need are the following, okay? Profitability ratio, it's good to look at your profit rate. Okay, magkano bang tinubong ko? Yung net income mo, yan yung EBITDA divided by gross revenues multiplied by 100%. Okay, and then the formula for rate of return or what you call the ROI, return on investment, net income per annum or you can call it the EBITDA divided by the stockholder's equity or maybe your total investment. Okay, multiplied by 100%. And then finally, payback. Uh, payback will tell you gaano katagal bago mo mabawi ang puhunan mo. So your total investment divided by your net cash flow or alternatively your total investment divided by your EBITDA. So sometimes you will know kung ikaw ay kikita within 5 years, within 2 years mababawi mo siya. Again, refer to the example in the sample business plan I gave you on Ma Maharlika. Okay? Now, risk assessment. 
There is no perfect business plan. It is important to anticipate problems and the worst case scenario. Every business has risk and entrepreneurs must identify them early on. Assessing risk allows the entrepreneur to develop mitigating controls to prevent or minimize the adverse impact of such risk. There are two kinds of risk. Business risk arising from the nature of the business itself and financial risk, those with direct monetary implications. So I'm giving you two sets of examples here. The financial risk assessment, okay, for Maharlika, for example, fraud, uncollected debts, hotel skippers, yung mga tumatakas na hindi nagbabayad, spoilage and breakages, supplier-related problems. These all have financial, direct financial implication. So, um, tignan natin kung paano natin ina-address to. Okay? So, makikita natin na uh, you distribute the risk according to uh, 50% for financial and 50% for business. No? So, you distribute it. Para sa akin, pinakamahalagang risk yung fraud. Kaya point 0.15, pangalawa siguro yung spoilage and breakages, pangatlo siguro supplier-related problems. And then what's the probability? Sa tingin mo kung malakas ang probability mangyayari siya, maybe point 0.9 or point, point 0.85, meaning mataas yun, 85% na mangyayari. So you cross-multiply. So you will have now the risk factor. Then you total all the risk factors for your financial. So here, the example I gave you is 0 0.062. Mababa lang siya. Okay? Now, let's look at the business risk. Okay? So, calamity prone yung lugar na yon sa may poblasyon. Okay? Bahain doon. Aggressive ang competitors. Napakarami nila. Uh, pwedeng kopyahin yung mga ginagawa mong original. Okay? COVID-19 pandemic is still there. High turnover of employees. Uh, pwede kasing ipirate yung magagaling mong empleyado. So, again, let's do the distribution. 50% distribute that across. Pinaka-importante yung competition. Pangalawa yung COVID-19 pandemic and so on and so forth. Then you cross, uh, you identify what is the probability that this risk will happen. Okay? So mukhang mataas yung probability ng pandemic kasi pandemic is here to stay until 2025. Isa ring mataas yung aggressive ang competition. Mababa lang yung calamity kasi mm, muulan pero hindi naman masyado bahain yung lugar na yun. Binabaha pero hindi madalas. Okay? So again, 0.219 is the business risk. So medyo mataas yung business risk, mababa lang yung financial risk. Okay? So then you can develop mitigating controls if you like. So mabawasan ang mga risk na yan. Okay? So that ends now the lecture on risk assessment. So you will be required to submit your entire paper by June 8th. Okay, June 8th is the final deadline. I'm extending it. And there will be no more oral defense. Okay, no more oral defense. Just submit them and then I'm going to ask the team through the group chat five questions. You need to answer those questions within 24 hours. That means by um, June 9, you should be able to answer the five questions. Then I can compute your grades already. I will be submitting the grades on June 13. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed all the lectures and you learned something. Even if we had some difficulties during the semester, good luck to everyone. Bye!